Chris has two important uh, factors, or two important things about Chris. He uh, is a Grammy-nominated artist uh, that, that many of you know. Uh, and, and I think, you know, as importantly, uh, a, a grantee from the Arts and Humanities. Uh, so that's, you know, another important... Uh, um, a- welcome, everybody. What a, what a crowd. Um, a great crowd of artists, stakeholders, government folks, um, every, you know, people from all over the city. Uh, my name is Andrew Trueblood. I am the director of D.C.'s Office of Planning. And um, back in college, I was actually a, a technical director for a theater group there. So I have a, a passion for theater and, and a history with, with the arts. I want to thank you all for coming out. And I especially want to thank uh, the Anacostia Playhouse for hosting us tonight. Let's give them a look. I hope uh, you all are enjoying the music, uh, the art, and the food tonight, uh, all provided by local artists and businesses. <coughs> Uh, while also maybe learning a little bit about the cultural plan. I will say after uh, the remarks from the mayor, we, will have, we have stations set up where you can learn about elements of the cultural plan. You can engage with, with staff about it. Uh, we will also have food uh, and activities out front as well. Um, I also want to thank uh, Ward 8 resident and visual artist Dele Akarija. Uh, who who's who did the who's out front um, with the with the painting that, that hopefully people have had a chance to interact with. Thank you. So this is an exciting moment. Um, I think it's an exciting moment um, for for many of us and hopefully for you. It's really years in the making. Um, I was reminded that some of the kickoff for this uh, was was actually three years ago. Um, and, and I think it's important, uh, it's, it's, it's the first cultural plan um, that the District of Columbia has ever done, which is incredible. You know, I, I think arts and culture and our cultural creators and our makers are really, really what give the District of Columbia our heart and our soul. So thank you all for, for being a part of this. And I think this, this plan is really a recognition of all of that and how important it is to the city um, and, and to, to, to what we have been. But as importantly, and what this plan is thinking about, is also where we are going and how to get there. Um, I, I think the cultural plan is, is unique on our side, on the government side, because it was a collaboration of three government agencies, the Office of Planning, um, but also the uh, Commission on Arts and Humanities, and Director Raus Rosario is here, um, as well as the Office of Cable, Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment, with Director Angie Gates, who are here. Um, and the three of our agencies worked together over the last three years um, uh, to, to bring together cross-sector planning, arts management, and creative economy support to think about how to put this together. Um, I want to thank the staff from the agencies that have worked on that, um, not only to get this together, but the, but the event tonight. Um, and I want to give a special uh, shout-out to Ryan Hand and Sakina Khan, who really led the effort in getting this done. So thank you, guys. Um, and, and while uh, we have all been toiling on this, um, some of us for many for a few years, um, I think it really is, I really have to thank uh, all of the stakeholders, all of the residents, all of the organizations, all of the artists who have been a part of, of, the, of the creation of this plan. Uh, we had over 1,500 people uh, provide input or attend events related to the, the creation of this cultural plan, and we had over 3,500 comments, which I think shows the level of interest um, and, and activism, really, uh, among the community. Uh, and I think one of the critical insights that, that we got out of this is the key of, of shared stewardship. That is to say, it is important the, 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 the cultural community is, is a critical stakeholder. The government is a critical stakeholder. But another critical stakeholder are the cultural consumers, the philanthropies, the cultural, the, the funders. Um, and, and, and really, it's, it's how do we bring all of, of those together. Um, and, and, and hopefully, this plan uh, lays path for us to leverage all of those. Um, I think if you, look at the, if you look at the posters, you'll see it says DC Cultural Plan Year One. Um, it really is sort of year zero, um, but I, I, it is really year one of many years. This is, this, there, are, um, there are many uh, recommendations in this plan. Not all of them uh, we can get to at the same time, but we have a running start. Um, and so I think you know, this will be a continued living effort uh, in partnership with the agencies mentioned, uh, that I mentioned before, but especially led by the Commission of Arts and Humanities. Um, 
uh, but you know, uh, uh, the framework is about a whole number of things. But I want to be honest that obviously uh, one of the more important things is is the investments uh, that the District of Columbia is making. Um, and the May Mayor Bowser has proposed that we invest even more in our creative uh, economy and in our cultural sector with $13.3 million in the, her FY 2020 budget dedicated to the implementation of the cultural plan. Um, and so uh, who is better uh, to tell you about these investments uh, than uh, the mayor herself? I am proud uh, to welcome our mayor and a huge supporter of the, culture in, the cultural sector in D.C., Mayor Muriel Bowser. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, it is wonderful uh, to see you all here and wonderful to be here in Anacostia to release and to talk about and to mingle and jingle uh, about uh, what so many people have worked so long on. Uh, and so let me uh, start off by acknowledging uh, our three agencies who've worked hand in hand. You heard Andrew talk about uh, the wonderful work of the DC Office on Planning. Thank you, Office on Planning. Uh, and I hope that you have all gotten a chance to meet or will meet tonight our new executive director for the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities. Terry, stand up so everybody can see you. Terry Rouse Rosario. And the wonderful work that Angie Gates and her team have been doing at the Office of Cable Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment, including bringing us 202 Creates. Thank you, Angie, for all of the work uh, that you uh, have done so well. I also would like to acknowledge uh, another partner in this work, and that's the Council of the District of Columbia and Council Member David Grasso, uh, who is the lead author of the legislation uh, that has supported the development of the cultural plan. So let's hear for <laughs> Council Member Grasso. Uh, and to the commissioners uh, on the, the Arts and hu uh, Humanities Council, uh, if they are here, I think the Chairwoman Kay Kendall and Commissioner Fleet and Commissioner Floyd uh, might be here tonight, and let's acknowledge them. They're, I can't see out there, but I think they're here. Uh, and uh, our team has also worked very closely um, with uh, other partners, and many of you are here tonight from the D.C. Public Library, Arts in Action D.C., the Arena Stage, Anacostia Arts Center, Gala Hispanic, uh, and the Kennedy Center and Gallaudet University and many others. So thank you uh, very much to all of our partners. Uh, so Andrew set the, the stage uh, for you uh, in describing how important the arts are and the creative economy is uh, to a growing city. Uh, our city is over 700,000 people now. We haven't been this big since the early 1970s. Uh, and people are moving, living in places that they haven't before, working and going out to dinner and to celebrate the arts in many different ways. Um, they're taking different forms of transportation uh, and they're living in all parts of the city. And the vibrancy that we are generating from uh, the rich diversity of our city is so supported uh, by our wonderful and growing arts and culture in Washington, D.C. In many ways, uh, we have the most vibrant city uh, in the United States. Uh, we're growing uh, and we are celebrating those things that have made us uh, a richly diverse city. But we know, uh, and it's very clear, that we have to be intentional about preserving that culture. Uh, and that is what this cultural plan uh, seeks to do. Uh, in the plan, and I hope that you will take the time to, to go around and talk uh, at the different stations about the recommendations that you'll find. Uh, this plan lays out 23 policies and eight investment recommendations. The cultural plan addresses issues of affordability, access, and sustainability. 
Uh, what we hear from arts organizations across all eight wards of the District of Columbia uh, is how can we afford to stay in Washington, D.C.? Uh, and it echoes what we hear from residents across all eight wards of Washington, D.C. So in addition to the very specific things focused on the arts that you will see uh, in this plan and in my 2020 budget, we're also focused on how we make D.C. more affordable for D.C. residents. In investments in affordable housing, investments in affordable child care, and investments in transportation affordability. All that will help us attract artists, keep artists right here in Washington, D.C. We're also very focused on how we can support our arts organizations and make sure we're supporting arts organizations across uh, the city. And that's hugely important to us as well. And we want to work with our arts organizations so that they are not only vibrant uh, from an artistic standpoint, but also from their business basics. Uh, and we want to work with you to make sure somebody's happy about that. Good. I know I'm happy about it. Uh, and the, the cultural plan uh, will seek to uh, have us focus on doing uh, exactly that. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're supporting a new organizations and places that haven't supported the, the arts uh, as, as strongly and make sure that young people are engaged in the arts in our schools, uh, in our libraries, and in our recreation centers. Uh, our budget this year, for example, uh, doubles the amount of investment that we've seen in arts organizations in Ward 7 uh, and 8. In 2015, that investment was 700000 and this year it's over $1.6 million. We've also invested more than $200,000 to expand arts programming for our young people at our recreation centers in Ward 7 and 8. And through the cultural plan, uh, our 2020 budget, we will invest $2 million, which will leverage an additional $4 million in private investments to give individual artists and cultural organizations access to the capital that will help support projects that typically have have high upfront cost. We've also invested $500,000 to link cultural organizations to resources around DC that will empower them to stay competitive in DC's economy by embracing new nonprofit and for-profit business models. In short, this plan is going to help us leverage the resources, passion, and talents that already exist across our city uh, to protect and expand the cultural and creative opportunities our cities have to offer. And with this plan, uh, we are proving that D.C. is not only a city uh, that appreciates art, but also a city where we invest in the arts and where artists can live, grow, and thrive. Uh, and you are our best ambassadors. Uh, frequently, we are, and when we invite artists to the Wilson Building or to events across the city, people coming from New York or California or other places in the US, I always emphasize to them that you can live here in DC and work. Uh, you can make a living in the arts in DC, and we are intentional about supporting our creative economy. So once again, I want to thank you for your involvement over these three years. I want to invite you to go through the plan and participate with us in how we implement the plan. And let's make this a living plan. Uh, let it continue to grow. We add to it. Uh, we tweak it where necessary, and we make sure it's serving uh, our DC and the arts. Thank you very much. Thank you.